spring has sprung here in Austin, Texas. So we decided now that the weather is really nice to bring this show um, outdoors. So we're joined with our friends, the birds, maybe our um, our recent the owl, visitor, yeah. the owl, Alex. Alex will join us. Um, but anyway, we're here with episode eleven of Calls with Paul. And since in honor of spring, we're going to talk about some spring cleaning tips for home sellers. Before we get into that, do you guys mind giving us the thumbs up and letting us know if you can hear us okay, or if you're having any problems with the video or the or the? Um... It's hard to fit it into the camera. There's the thumbs up. <laughs> There you go. I gave it to you. All right. So anyway, and, and throughout today's episode, feel free to drop your questions or comments below, or if there's something that you don't feel comfortable um, asking publicly, you can always reach out to Paul directly through direct message. So with that said, spring cleaning tips for home sellers, people who are getting ready to put their home on the market. Yep. Um, I think I just read, was it this morning, that homes that are listed the first week of April sell for something like 6% more. Is that right? Yeah, 6 to 8%, depending on the year and type of home. There's about a, oddly, there's about a half a percent difference between small homes and large homes. I thought that difference would be a lot bigger, but it's not. But to answer your question, yes, that is that is right. And we're, com <clears throat> we're coming into April next week. Can you believe it? Monday is April Fool's Day. Yeah. So... It might be a little hard to get things ready to go on the market in a week, although we've moved mountains like that before. Um, I thought we might talk a little bit about what someone might do in terms of spring cleaning. Um, one of the first things, we've touched on this in other episodes, but I think it, it's important to kind of emphasize, and it's something I've been trying to do, and that is declutter. Well, it's something you can do way ahead of time. Like, you, you know, it doesn't have to be right there at the last second. If you know you're going to be selling next year, you know, you can start decluttering. Well, and, you know, for me, I kind of go down the rabbit's trail when I start decluttering, and the next thing I know, I'm unearthing all the memory boxes, and I've sat on the floor for an hour, and all I've done is looked at one thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't throw things away as fast as I do. No, I'm more methodical. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, decluttering. I do that, uh, what's your name, the Marie Kondo thing? The Marie Kondo I just method? I it out. Well, I don't think, do you know that the Marie Kondo method is, like, <laughs> finding things that spark joy? Oh, well, I tell it I love it, and then I throw it out, <laughs> right? Something like that, in a very simplified the ones version. I, the shirts I keep, I fold them into triangles, right? <laughs> that lady's hilarious. Um, and very popular. <laughs> yeah, like, people yeah. really love the Marie Kondo thing, and it really does fit nicely with this idea of decluttering. Um, and when we're talking about decluttering, there's different kinds of decluttering. Um, you want to start with surfaces. Tell us about surface decluttering. Uh, well, you know, you want to you want to make sure that you uh, your house can really be seen. And um, did I mess up my hair? You totally did. I kind of like it up like that. You don't <laughs> no. talk about decluttering. Well, this is a surface, isn't it? <laughs> so you want to make sure you know all your countertops are clean and uh, everything everything in your house is clean and your you know your your closet's kind of empty. And I like to uh, say that you know people need to be able to walk into your house, open a closet door, and um, Imagine after shopping being able to put things away very easily without having to like push everything off to the side and uh, buyers need to be able to see the bottom of the closet and all the way back so they can get a good sense of how much room there is. You might shortchange yourself on your closet if you have too too many things in there. People would be like, oh gosh, I, I can't live here. Well, so the surfaces, I mean, I like to put lots of tchotchkes and little decorative items out. So you want your surfaces uh, to be kind of cleaned off not completely bare but you really want to the kitchen counters and all the piles of paper and all the magazines and kind of limit all of the, the little decorative things that you have sitting around on your surfaces right fewer tchotchkes fewer fewer junk less junk and then you mentioned closets yeah you, you were giving me a really um good tips on that this morning um i don't know if i'll ever get there in my own closet but <laughs> Well, you don't have to until one day we go to sale. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about the closets. We'll go into more detail there. So closets are kind of tricky. I think I think buyers, whether they mean to or not, they'll open up a closet door and they want to kind of calculate how much space is in there. I understand that you're living there and there's probably some things laying around. <clears throat> buyers need to be able to see, you know, from the, from the bottom all the way back to the closet. And not everywhere necessarily, but just at least in a few spaces so they can get a sense of how deep it is. And you want them to feel like they can come back from shopping at Neiman Marcus or Dillard's or whatever, wherever you shop at and uh, uh, put their things away without any hassle. So they feel like it's large and that this is how their life would be um, if, they, if they were here. So you want to really create this ideal living 
environment. Well, that was one of the things that was sort of shocking to me. It's like the idea I could actually see the back wall and floor of my <laughs> closet. It's like that's that's an aspiration. Oh, there. I didn't uh, I didn't mean for you to take that personally. <laughs> so closets going for I think that idea you said about one third full. So yeah. I like this idea. They should be able to be able to think about coming home and having a place to put their stuff. Yeah. Um, pantry is another one that I think people yeah. tend to forget about. Tell us about decluttering the pantry. It's it's really easy to overlook. We, uh, uh, you really want to you know start to thin all that down. And and again, just like the closet where people go shopping and feel like they can put things away, the pantry too. I mean, you you want people to really feel like they can put their Costco items away in the pantry if that's where they wanted it. If you don't if you don't have a Costco room, um, and it should be neat and tidy. Uh, we had one client not long ago. She was amazing. She took all of her cans and had them all facing outright. Do you know who I'm talking about? I can guess. She had them all facing outright and all like perfect all the time. Uh, you don't have to go to that extreme, but I think you get the idea. You know, you just need it to look tidy. And again, this is this is the life that we're selling for the people. It's looking. probably the time to pare down on your bulk items. Right? <laughs> I mean, you don't want to have 50 of whatever is in your pantry yeah. and try to have space just like in the closets. You want to have space where people can see stuff. So I think that's yeah. good advice. You don't want to have the 50 uh, paper towels and one Cheerio box in there. And then you reminded me that we need to clean and declutter something. I totally forgot. Uh, uh oh. The attic. Yeah. And the garage. Yeah. Those are important areas. So, you know, probably not while you're showing your initial time, but uh, uh, mo some guys like to go up into the attic and take a look around and, uh, you know, while we're not the deciders in home purchases, it really is helpful for us to be excited to, uh, for inspections and stuff. It's nice to have all the, all the things out. You're moving anyway, so you might as well get it, get it all out. Sure, sure. Now, in this era of Marie Kondo and and just in general decluttering, I've been hearing a lot about how um, a lot of the donation places are sort of overwhelmed with the things that people are bringing in. And Culture Map um, had a really wonderful article this week that I will be posting on our Facebook page. And I loved it because it, it really gave some ideas for people about where they could take their donated items. There are things you're not really sure what to do with. And they're all local. They're all Austin um I don't know if they're all nonprofits, but they're all Austin um, organizations, and they all have charitable purposes and charitable ca charitable causes. So things like taking your old cell phones to safe place where people who have been um, subject to domestic violence or abuse or exploitation can use them to make 911 calls and things like that. Um, there are... Um, a play, you know, there's a company that will accept your medical equipment to give to our older Austin residents that might need medical equipment or healthcare equipment. And um, there's an organization for taking your musical instruments and things like that that you're not really sure. You know, your mm -hmm. kid's not playing a saxophone yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do with the thing? Um, and that's a place that you can can take that. And 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 I'll put that list out on Facebook that you're all welcome to kind of look at it, or you can find it on Culture Map. But there's a list of several places that I was really excited to see for those kinds of bicycle parts and bikes and things that you're just sort of like, what do I do with this? And um, also there were some local versions of the Goodwill um, that I liked, like um, the Pets Alive thrift store, all the sales from the thrift items at Pets Alive go back to the rescuing and rehabilitation and help of, of animals. So I think that's, that's great. And I just want to stop on the closets thing. Um, one of our favorite stagers, Lynn Ray with Mambo Interiors has kind of giving us an idea hey, to Lynn. say her, her goal. Yeah. Hi Lynn. Her goal is to try to get the closets down to about a half. Um, so that you can show off again, the space and the storage that you have. You can, which is, you can read that from here. I that's can, amazing. I, I can. Which, my eyes are five years younger, younger than yours. Eyes, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that's a great tip, Lynn. Thank you for weighing in on that. Um, so that's decluttering. Let's talk about another thing that you can do to spring clean and get your home ready for sale. How about deep cleaning? Oh, deep cleaning. Uh, well, I have it in one word. And it's called boardwalk. And what's that mean? That's a that's a cleaning service where they'll send a bunch of people to come clean your house very quickly. But um, I don't think that's what we're really after there, there's a whole lot of stuff you know like like who cleans their baseboards well that's important when you're selling your home who cleans the windows and who does all this stuff and, um it's nice to have one company come in and really magically do it now it's not cheap but 
Well, and I think you raise a good point. Like any of these things for spring cleaning and getting your home ready to go on the market, you can either do yourself or you could outsource. Yeah. There are companies that will help you declutter. There are companies, you know, stagers that will help you kind of go through that kind of thing. There are people that will help you with the deep cleaning. But just to hit the mark on some of the popular ones for people that want to do it themselves, yeah. you know, grab that magic eraser and clean up the scuff marks. I mean, if you're like us, if you have children, it's like the scuff marks multiply overnight. So like run through and try to touch up the scuff marks. Can um, that eraser do that with our kids? handprints and stuff or is oh, that a paint job it's well at this point we're probably at the paint job level but yeah. for for other scuffs you can try the magic eraser you've also you know clean the baseboards empty out the bowls of your light fixtures and empty out the bugs and things that have accumulated you know just yesterday you were yeah. up there changing the filters of our hvac system yeah. going ahead and cleaning out your your vents so that you don't have dust and things hanging in those uh, and our friend Emma has just joined so hey Emma hey, thanks Emma. for thanks for tuning in today yes. we appreciate it yeah. sent you a text message by the way um, also that means text back <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, steam cleaning your rugs and your carpets um, even your furniture and if you've got wood floors you know maybe this is the time to have your floors polished or if you've got tile floors bring someone in to professionally have them cleaned and to have the grout cleaned um, you know clean your appliances you know deep clean the oven clean out the fridge clean out the stove and all those things um, if you've got glass shower walls in Austin, our water can be a little hard. Yeah. It can leave that foggy film on your glass. So you want to make an effort to get the, the glass scoured and cleaned. And you can do some research. There's things that you can use. Like there's a swimming pool cleaner that's supposed to help really? with the glass. Yeah, muri muriatic acid. You squeegee every day anymore? No, we're going to squeegee every day. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're doing. I hate doing that. Um, you know, and we've got a checklist. So if you're not really sure all the things that you should clean, you can either Google it or we're happy to share with you our spring cleaning yeah. checklist. We're also happy to share with you our list of vendors that yeah. we've accumulated over the years that you can use. Um, we're always looking for new people to add to the list and any in input yeah. and feedback that you have. But we do have cleaners and specialists and things that we can refer out to people. Yeah. Most people, when they're selling, they really want to, you know, they're busy. They're working. Yep. I have kids and uh, don't have time for that. Yeah. So having someone else help yeah. is always, is always help yeah. is useful. So we talked about decluttering and deep cleaning. Another kind of spring prep, if you will, would be deferred maintenance. Oh yeah. That's a really big one. We have a lot of it. Well, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. for other people, what are you talking about when you say deferred maintenance? We all like this. This deck that we're on is a little bit worn. It really needs to be uh, sealed up and uh, um, shiny like we're going to sell it. I think right now for <clears throat> living and loving and being on the on the deck, I think it's great. But uh, it could use some TLC. We, we really want everything to look as close to new as it can. Mm -hmm. uh, clean the gutters. Do the deck. Make sure the yard looks sharp, you know, maybe do a little bit of landscaping here. And we're going to get to the exterior in a minute. Oh, we're not on the exterior. No, we're on, we're on deferred maintenance. Inside. Maintenance. Maintenance. What, like? Like, like, okay, cleaning your gutters, you mentioned, weather stripping. Like, yeah. did, over the winter, has the weather stripping come loose? Do you have a doorknob that's, you know, shifted? The doors aren't closing right? Um, is anything broken? Do you have a pane of glass that needs to be replaced? It's got a yeah. crack in it. Or um, did the dog scratch the door and ruin, you know, the the yeah. frame of the door? You know, those kinds of deferred maintenance items. Um, grout, caulking, you know, bathtub caulking kind of can kind of sometimes come loose. Like that, just that little stuff. Yeah, you just walk your house and you'll see it all. Like it's, uh, but you have to do it with fresh eyes. Yeah, you can't, can't do it in your normal routine. But when I walk our house, it's really intimidating. You know? Not because it's our house, but just, you know, open your eyes to stuff. Well, I mean, like just this last week, our daughter likes, she's five, about to be five, and she likes to scramble up onto the countertops and get her own water glass and stuff. And in her scrambling, she pulled off the trim on one of our cabinets. And now I have this piece of trim sitting in the kitchen, and I'm going to have to find somebody to install that again. Yeah, but um, she can't do anything wrong. To you. Yeah. You can't do anything wrong for you. It's just lots wrong to me. All right. So deep cleaning, decluttering, deferred maintenance. But the last thing, um, sprucing up the exterior. You were about to talk about that. Yeah, like uh, well, the gutters for a while. But then, then on along the siding, you know, you'll see where maybe water is crapped or things have gotten really kind of dirty. And 
uh, all that just needs to be washed off or hosed off or, uh, or potentially repainted, but like over by the trash cans, you know, uh, things, that's never a pretty place, but people walk by it a lot. And, uh, your buyer will sure, sure notice. So we want, we want things to look as new as possible. Well, and kind of dig into some of that. You mentioned decluttering and I think, you know, the trash cans, like things just pile up. I mean, if you've got children, toys end up in the yard or they get discarded down along a fence and you forget yeah. that it's there. Bicycles that you're not riding, you know, leaning up against the fence, like kind of going through the yard and decluttering, putting the wheelbarrow away, you know, those yeah. kinds of little things. Um, also, you know, power washing, and oddly enough, I just reached out to our preferred vendor for window cleaning and Windows. power washing, which is Gwindos here in for our, Austin. Our house? For our house. Oh, my. Yeah. I mean, when, when you reach that point when we've got kind of that green algae on the siding, I think it's, I think it's time, it's time. to call in a professional and get it power washed. I can't cheat my way through that no. just a little bit longer. No. no. <laughs> and staining the decks, oiling the decks, depending on the kind of wood you have, you know, kind of reconditioning. Can she do that, too? Um, I don't know. I'll have to ask. That would be a great question. Oh, she's doing power washing. you think she could... Uh, I'll ask her. I think it's a pretty different uh, process. But, you know, power washing the siding, your walkways, your sidewalks, things that tend to look a little old. Same same if you have a stone house, like the limestone can kind of turn black. Power yeah. washing is great for the Texas limestone. Um, you know, cleaning your windows. You want to get as much light in as you can, so making sure everything is bright and shiny and clean. You know, stuff like cleaning out your flower beds. I mean, we were over earlier. We've got a house in Zilker that's going on the market in a couple of weeks. And I was there on Monday while they were having the trees trimmed and supervising that. And I was out there in the flower beds, pulling the dead leaves off of, sure the, off of the bushes and yeah. um, things like that. So like raking the leaves and updating the flower beds, maybe dropping in a few new plants, I think is really helpful. Some color. Yeah. Color, some color. Really, you want your house to feel happy. And other stuff like sliding doors, like over the winter, you know, all the little debris gets in the tracks, you know, kind of cleaning out the tracks on the sliding doors, uh, you know, freshening up what you have. So if you've got, I'm using our house as an example a lot, not like we're selling sure. it, but, um, you know, if you sit outside a lot and you've got patio furniture, you know, things might not have wintered well, you can add um, a little touch by adding new pillows to your patio furniture and kind of adding a little bright touch or your welcome mat might be a little worn at this point, kind of replacing your welcome mat and doing little things like that. So um, just refreshing the exterior, yep. giving it a little bit, a little bit of pop and color and brightness. So um, any other thoughts about spring cleaning to get your home ready to go for sale? No, I think they got the idea. I think, I think the big thing is color and happy and, uh, things to be put away right you know if you have a kayak in your backyard let's get it out if you have <clears throat> kid kids bikes that are broken uh, we have have one client who had a chair that sat out on a deck and got rained on for like a year <laughs> you know like that all that stuff like can you take that go. away paul <laughs> sure we'll we'll get rid of your old yeah, furniture right on that <laughs> um, yeah so anyway, that's, those are some just basic things to think about if you're preparing to sell the spring, kind of spring cleaning. And again, we're happy to share with you the link to the donations from Culture Map or to share with you our list of vendors or um, the spring cleaning checklist. So just reach out if you'd like any of those things. And as always, share this video with anybody that you think would benefit from it. Um, and remember to tune in next week at 12 p.m. for calls with... Paul, for episode 12. Episode 12. That's a solid dozen. Yeah. So thanks for joining us. I'm Marquette signing off. Oh, I'm Paul Redham signing off also. All right. We'll see you next week. Adios.